Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make musical instruments for stuffed animals. This has been requested for a long time, so I'm finally doing them. And I'm only doing three, but there's still a lot to get to, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with the simplest one. So the first thing I'm going to make is a flute. The base of this is going to be a paper tube, so I can make it whatever size I want. But you could also use a wooden dowel or straw. And to make the paper tube, I'm just taking some recycled paper and rolling it starting at the corner around a paintbrush. Or you could use like a pencil or a toothpick, just something to start it out. And I'm also gluing this as I go. The key though is to remove the paintbrush before you fully roll it up because if that happens, it might be too tight in there to remove, which is what happened here on my first attempt. I was really trying to cut this paintbrush out, but at some point I pulled so hard uh, it just like snapped. And luckily this wasn't my favorite paintbrush, but I should have just stopped and started over as soon as I found out it was stuck. But as long as you remove the object before it's too tight, then you shouldn't have this problem. So here's my second attempt, and once I have it to kind of the thickness I want it, I'm going to do one more layer around just the middle part. And that's just to cover up that kind of spiral shape from rolling the paper and give it just like a flat finish. I probably should have stopped a little earlier because it was a little bit thicker than I wanted. Next, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make a thinner tube. So I'm starting with a toothpick to roll this up, and I'm going to cut the paper smaller so it doesn't end up too thick. Funny thing is, this did end up being too thick, so I remade one that was thinner. It's not that big of a deal, but I was just looking at reference photos for the flute, and that side tube is really, really thin, I think. I also don't play any of these instruments, so I'm sorry that I don't know the names of the parts. Okay, now I'm cutting that bigger tube down to size, and a flute is actually surprisingly long, so I made this about six and a half inches long. Now I'm gonna cut the thinner tube to about three and a quarter inches. Okay, here's the thinner tube I made and cut to the right size. Now I'm gonna glue this on closer to one of the ends, but still have like half an inch of space till the end. And I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna put it first so I can add the hot glue and just stick it on. You could probably use any other kind of glue for this though. Next for the keys, I'm gonna glue on some pony beads starting at where I glued on the tube. And I know a flute has a bunch of these, but since these are pretty big beads, I just spaced them out a little bit and stopped once I got to the end of the little tube. But then at the end, I'm gonna glue on two more, but on the side. Next, this is optional, but I'm gonna use a little hot glue to connect like the side of the bead to the little tube because an actual flute does have like little connectors there. I don't really know what to call it, but I'm gonna do that to each one on the top. And then for the mouthpiece, I'm just gonna do like a little ring of glue towards the end. But I should have checked the reference photos for this because the mouthpiece is actually a little bit away from the end. Okay, now before I paint this, I'm gonna try to get those little strings from the hot glue in between the beads out. And I made some use out of that paintbrush I broke. I just tried my best to pull most of them off so you wouldn't see it when I added the paint. Okay, so after this, the last step is to just paint the entire thing silver. This is gonna need a few coats, so I have this little like plastic covered paper underneath so I can let it dry. You really gotta get in between those beads to completely cover everything. But yeah, after letting it dry, here is how it looks, and you can add a layer of Mod Podge to protect the paint and give it a little more shine. Don't mind me pretending to play it incorrectly. Okay, the next instrument I'm gonna make is a drum. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit more work because it does kind of make a drum sound. Like, I feel like it's kind of similar to a drum. You can listen to the sound it makes at the end and decide for yourself but I'm gonna be making kind of a ring out of thin cardboard and shaping it like a duct tape roll. If you have an empty roll of tape, that would be great too, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna be making two separate rings. So I cut a strip of paperboard about two and a quarter inches wide, and this is how tall the drum's gonna be. And then I have it long enough to be the size of that roll of tape. Mine looked a little bit too tall, so I cut it down a little bit. And luckily I did because now I have these two thin strips that I can add to the top and the bottom to be like the metal detailing. So I'll paint those silver later. Before gluing these on, I also kind of bent each piece so it would be easier to later form it into the drum shape. Once I have them glued on, I'm gonna trace this onto some more paperboard just to get the same width. But I'm gonna make this slightly shorter than the other piece because this is gonna have to fit within the other ring. 
it should all make sense later. Okay, so now that I have it the same length as that other piece, I'm gonna cut off about half an inch, so like a pretty big chunk, just to make sure it ends up being smaller than the other one. Then I'm gonna match up the ends and tape it. And after it's thoroughly taped, this is what's gonna turn into the drum part. So next I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment paper. It probably should be bigger than this, but I just found like these little squares in my pantry, so I'm gonna use them. And if you don't have parchment paper, you could also try using layers of tissue paper. So I'm putting this directly on top and trying to fold down the sides the best that I can. And I first used a rubber band to try to hold it, but then I went in with a stapler so it would be more permanent. Or you could use glue or tape, but this tape specifically did not really work on the parchment paper, so just be aware that some tape won't work on parchment paper. But it's okay if it's not all attached because there's going to be an outer ring kind of, you know, holding it all together. So I'm wrapping this piece around and marking where I'm going to tape it. After fully taping the ends together, I can try this on and it fits perfectly. So now I can take this off and paint the outside whatever I want. I went with black, but you could go with like dark blue, red, or even like a metallic version of those. That would be cool. You also want to paint a little bit of the inside, so either the top edge or the bottom edge with black or silver or something like that, because you'll kind of see it sticking out when it's attached to the inside piece. After that's dry, I'm going to be using some toothpicks to add some details to the outside. So I want these to fit right in between that like top and bottom border. So I'm going to first mark and cut one and then just cut the others to the same size. I'm using fingernail clippers for this, but I'm sure scissors will also work. I just grabbed these first for some reason. After cutting them all to the same size, I'm going to paint them silver. I did seven, but you can do more or less depending on the size of your drum. While those dried, I decided to go in and paint the top and bottom edge of the drum silver. Since this was an extra piece glued on top, that should make it a lot easier to get a clean line. Unfortunately, that was not there for the back with the tape, so I just tried my best. Okay, now I'm going to glue the toothpicks around the drum as evenly spaced as possible, but I was just kind of eyeballing it. And I used Mod Podge for this because I knew it would dry clear and I was going to coat the outside of this with Mod Podge anyway. Once they were mostly dry, I coated the entire thing with Mod Podge to give the drum a shine. Okay, after that, this is pretty much done. So I can fit this over like the actual drum part and you can glue or tape this together, but mine was a pretty tight fit, so I didn't have to do that. Okay, now the moment of truth, does this actually sound like a drum? Um, okay, I'll admit, listening to it back, not really. But I think it could have sounded a little better if I got the parchment paper tighter. Okay, but now I'm going to make actual tiny drumsticks for this. So you could use a wooden dowel for this if you have one, but I'm going to just make a paper tube like last time, rolling it around a toothpick, and I didn't bother removing it because it's fine if it's still in there. You just want the width of your paper to be how long you want the drumstick to be. Now drumsticks are usually kind of tapered and have like a very round end. So to create the round end, I'm going to just add a little dot of hot glue and then I'm going to tip it upside down so it kind of forms like, you know, more of a long shape. I honestly probably started with too much glue and this was harder than I thought because while the glue's still hot, it moves around really easily. So any way you turn it, it's going to start falling. So I'd say just try to get the glue dollop to go like straight down. Okay, so here's how they both looked when they were done. These remind me of something that I really can't put my finger on, but I'm just going to paint over this with some tan paint. And I tried to swirl in a darker brown to get more of a wood grain texture, but it all kind of blends together. So I just went in with the darker brown at the end. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the drumsticks, so let's test them out. I was testing out some different rhythms because I did used to play the piano, but I'm definitely not a drummer, so I know this isn't very good. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for the drum, and this is just a singular drum, but if you want to make more and kind of fit them together, uh, good luck. You might be able to find a simpler way to make the other drums. Okay, the last thing I'm going to make is the electric guitar, and I'd say this is the most time consuming out of all of them. You don't have to be as extra as me though, and so it might be shorter. So first, I've already drawn out some patterns for the guitar. I'll link these in the description box, or you could just draw out whatever shape you want. I cut out three of the whole thing and then trim off just the neck for one piece 
and then just the body for another piece. So you should have three pieces like this. The first thing to do is trace these on some paperboard and cut them out. If you want it to go faster, you could also use like corrugated cardboard. It will be probably a little harder to cut out though. So I'm gonna trace and cut out two of the entire guitar, two of just the neck, and seven of just the body piece. I know that's a lot and you don't have to do this many, but if you want it thicker, you can add more, or if you want it thinner, you can do less. So now the time consuming part is cutting out each of these pieces, but I just put on a show and watched it while cutting all these out. After cutting out all the pieces, I can start stacking and gluing them together. I'm going to have it in this order, all seven body pieces on the bottom, then the two full pieces, and then the two neck pieces on top. I'm using glue stick for this to get a really thin layer, and since it's not wet, the paperboard shouldn't get wavy or anything. So now I just need to keep repeating this. After letting it dry for a little bit, I'm going to go in with a nail file and kind of just sand the edges a little bit smoother. You don't have to do this, but I feel like it kind of merges the layers together a little bit more. I didn't do it that intensely, so you know, it's not perfectly smooth, but I feel like it kind of softens up any edges sticking out. After that, I'm going to give this a base coat of paint. When I think of an electric guitar, I think red, so that's what I went with. Then for the neck, I painted it dark gray, but it pretty much just looks black. I probably should have done this part first though because I had to go back in and retouch with the red. Then I painted the very top of the guitar, which I think is called the head, with a really light tan color. Next, I'm going to make the scratch plate out of some white paper. So I first traced the body of the guitar and then sketched out the shape I wanted. I can leave a template for this as well. And then after cutting a little opening for the neck of the guitar, I can glue this on. You can also add this detail with paint, but I feel like it's just easier with paper. Okay, next I'm going to cut out some oval shapes out of some thin craft foam, but you could also use just like scrapbook paper. I only need three, but one should be a little bit thicker than the others. And I don't know what these are called exactly, but this is going to go on kind of like the body of the guitar, and this should be kind of level with the neck of the guitar, so the strings all lay flat. But yeah, I'm just arranging them in this way with the biggest one on the bottom, kind of in between the scratch plate and the red paint. And now I'm going to grab some glittery silver craft foam and cut this into thin strips. I already have the foam cut to a similar shape as the neck of the guitar, so all the strips are like the same width. But this foam ended up being too thick, so I kind of turned it sideways, so like the thickness is how wide it would be. So I ended up painting over silver anyway, so you could just paint these on if you want, but this will help me get really clean lines. So after gluing these down the entire neck, I'm going to paint over silver since that's just the color I wanted. And I guess before that, I made little buttons using the paint by just having like a big dollop on my paintbrush and then dropping it. But yeah, also after adding those lines, I added little dots in between to be like the finger markers. I'm not exactly sure if that's what those are, but I did that off camera. But now there's even more details to add, which can be a little bit tricky. So if you leave them off, this I think already looks pretty good. But next I'm going to add tuning pegs and I'm going to be using these tiny beads I have. And some of them are just like accidentally a little bit too long. So I picked those out and used that as like the pegs. But I mean, you might have to get creative and just use what you have for this. And it was a questionable choice to be using just like Elmer's glue for this because it was kind of hard to get them to stay exactly where I wanted, but eventually they stayed. Okay, next I'm gonna add the strings. So I've already cut some long pieces of gray thread and I'm gluing one end at the top, kind of spaced out evenly horizontally, but going up in the shape of the head. And since I used liquid glue for this, I'm making sure to just do one side, letting it dry, and then doing the other end. So once that dries, I'd recommend adding glue to this entire, like, lower foam piece, and then lay all the strings on top of that, and then try to hold them straight. I kept doing them one at a time, but that just kept adjusting everything, so I do them all at once. And then so the strings dry perfectly tightened, I'm having, like, a lot of extra stick out and then taping it to my background. And then I propped some stuff up next to the guitar so it didn't like shift down or anything. Okay, here is how it looks when it's dry. I ended up adding another oval of paper on top of the strings, which I forgot to film, but I just did that while the glue was still wet. And then I trimmed off the extra thread and painted the top of this silver. 
And now the last thing I'm gonna do is go in with a black pen and do four little dots on the foam pieces. And then I'm also doing some dots around the edge of the scratch board to look like it's, you know, screwed in. Oh, and I guess a few more things. I added little silver dots at the top where the strings are attached. Just, I don't know. I don't know why. More silver couldn't hurt. But then I coated the entire thing in Mod Podge just to help seal the strings in place because that'll kind of glue it down and give the whole thing a shine. And I think that's it for this guitar. Congratulations if you made it to the end because I kind of put off this video because I knew this would be a lot of work. But a lot of people requested it, so I hope you try some of these out. Oh my gosh, I forgot to add the strap. Okay, let's add the strap and then it'll be done. I'm using some black ribbon for this and have it cut so it kind of rests in the middle of their body. So, you know, looks like they're holding it. And once I'm confident it's the right length, I can just glue this on with some hot glue. I did one end at the base of the neck and the other at the bottom of the guitar. And now that is officially it with this guitar. Like I was saying before, I really hope you try this out if you were someone who requested this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give this video a like, comment any requests you have, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Bye! And I already have it in kind of the same shape as the neck of the And I already have it kind of in the same shape as the neck of the guitar. And I already kind of have it in the same shape as the neck of the guitar. Uh, I've said this so many times.